Anita Ekberg was the bombshell blonde from Sweden who won hearts in Hollywood and turned heads in Rome. Her ravishing physique became a matter of public discourse being discussed in the British Parliament. Let us find out how her era-defining beauty didn't spare her from a troubled personal life while looking at some of her rarest photos. Born in Malmö, Sweden, Anita Ekberg was the sixth of eight children in a large family. But trouble first struck at the age of six when it was discovered that she had rheumatic arthritis, which bound her to home for almost a year. During this time, she turned to movies and books as she couldn't go out to play. And this sparked her interest in the performing arts. She discovered her love of fashion and modeling soon after, however, when she started working at a fashion store in her hometown at the age of 13. Fame struck when she was just 19, and Anita Ekberg won the Miss Sweden pageant. Because of this, she got the chance to travel to the Atlantic City in the USA to participate in the Miss Universe pageant of 1951. And that is when her tryst with destiny began. In America, Ekberg had a starlet's contract with Universal Studios, which meant she had access to various training lessons like drama, elocution, dancing, horseback riding, and fencing. In an early sign of her free-spirited nature, Anita skipped most of her lessons to simply go on joyrides on horseback in Hollywood Hills. She later attributed this lack of discipline to the studio spoiling its young stars, and she was one of the biggest young stars they had under their wing. As a result, her film career failed to take off, but she was never away from the public eye. The curvy figure that would go on to define her became a matter of gossip in the Hollywood of the 1950s, along with the fact that she was seen mingling with some of the biggest stars in the world at that time. Howard Hughes, Frank Sinatra, Yul Brenner, Rod Taylor, and Errol Flynn are some of the biggest names in Hollywood she would get romantically involved with. She had soon started appearing in men's magazines like Playboy, on her way to becoming an iconic 1950s pinup girl. On top of all this, Anita Ekberg gained notoriety for her publicity stunts. There is a famous incident of her in the lobby of London's Berkeley Hotel where her dress appeared to burst open. She later admitted that this was prearranged. Slowly, her fame led to her appearances in some notable films. She appeared in War and Peace alongside Mel Ferrer and Audrey Hepburn, and also in Artists and Models, Hollywood or Bust, and Interpol. She appeared in Valerie, in Screaming Mimi, but all of these were only the lead-up to the movie that would truly put her on the map, La Dolce Vida. Anita Ekberg was already in Italy filming a different movie when Federico Fellini cast her for La Dolce Vita. He was instantly smitten with her beauty, going on to compare her with a powerful panther playing the mischievous young girl, a lioness proud of her good health, and a shark emanating the heat of a summer day. She played the role of Sylvia in this movie, a quintessential dream woman. This movie featured her in what is one of the most iconic scenes in all of cinema, where she is seen being romantic in Rome's Trevi Fountain with the character played by Marcello Maestroianni. Anita appears in a black strapless dress that hugs her figure and accentuates the physical features that drove her into stardom, and she has forever been immortalized with this scene. This scene is actually somewhat based in reality, as Anita Ekberg was seen washing a cut on her foot in the fountain after dancing barefoot in a club one night. One of the reasons La Dolce Vita was so popular was because the director, Federico Fellini, got the best out of Anita Ekberg. He was known to flirt outrageously with her on set, and he even dressed her outrageously. In one scene, she wore a dress that was an altered version of a cardinal's robe and made her climb St. Peter's Dome. Anita Ekberg still looked stunning in this outfit. This movie shot Anita Ekberg into stardom, but it also proved to be a bit of a scandal. The movie's Italian name translates to English as The Sweet Life, but the newspaper of the Vatican called it The Disgusting Life, and in the House of Lords in Britain, the movie's poster was discussed as obscene. Following La Dolce Vita, Anita Ekberg settled in Italy. Her life in Italy was chaotic, as suited a star of the stature of Anita Ekberg. She led the life of a famous movie star, driving around in expensive cars and being chased around by paparazzi. One famous story that must be mentioned is how she had once attacked paparazzi on her doorstep with a bow and arrow. Her marriages reflected the chaos of the rest of her life. Before making La Dolce Vita, she was married to Anthony Steele, a British actor. 
They got married in 1956 in a ceremony in Florence. Her wedding dress deserves a special mention here as she appeared in a stunning gown that left one shoulder bare. Some papers during the time called her dress more Tarzan than Jane. The marriage between Anita Ekberg and Anthony Steele, however, was less stunning. Steele was a noted alcoholic, and they had public quarrels that were often captured by the paparazzi. The personality of Steele inspired one of the characters in La Dolce Vita, Robert, who is an alcoholic as well, who slaps Ekberg's character Sylvia after she spent the whole night out with Marcello. In real life, Steele would hit her and even broke her dog's legs. Anita Ekberg's second marriage was longer but arguably worse. Despite her frolics with the most famous of superstars, her husbands could only disappoint her in married life. Her second husband, Rick Van Nutter, was a Hawaiian man who was posing as an Austrian nobleman. He was a B-grade movie actor who, it is said, mixed olive oil and red alcohol to achieve his tan. However, they got married in 1964 and started a car rental business. In the 12 years that Anita Ekberg was married to this man, he had apparently emptied three bank accounts of hers, stole her yacht, and her outboard motorboat. Anita Ekberg even accused him of stealing her villa, her art collection, her silver and furniture, and even the cargo ship she owned that had been sailing around the world. In the misery-ridden state, she gained weight at one point, and Rick Van Nutter had the audacity to call her a beached whale in public. Suffice to say, the marriages of Anita Ekberg were unmitigated failures. Maybe if she had the chance to marry the love of her life, things could have been different. Gianni Agnelli was the owner of Fiat, one of the largest industrial companies in Italy, and he broke her heart. They had a long affair that was always kept secret from the press. They had to sneak away to exotic locations to keep the relationship secret from Gianni's wife Morella, who happened to be an Italian noblewoman and aristocrat. Yet scandalous stories like the one of him having her pose naked on his desk to scandalize his business friends after an all-nighter never failed to leak. Agnelli supported Anita Ekberg financially, but that money never lasted. After the end of her second marriage and her subsequent financial troubles, Anita Ekberg did bounce back to buy a villa in the hills of Rome. But the latter parts of Anita Ekberg's career was a struggle as she appeared in movies in Italy that were mostly failures. Misfortune followed her when she sued an Italian magazine for publishing naked pictures of her in 1972, and then in 1977 when she was robbed twice in August and in December. She first fell ill in 2009 and then again in 2011. During her three-month stay in hospital, by which time she was poor and destitute, her house was robbed again. To make matters worse, her villa even caught on fire. Anita Ekberg eventually died in 2015, and having been born in Sweden and spending most of her life outside Sweden, she was buried in her motherland according to her wishes. Anita Ekberg's free spirit meant her life was never short of drama and controversy, and her stunning beauty meant she attracted attention wherever she went. While her personal life was mired in disasters and her life ended in sorry circumstances, she lives on in the public mind as the girl in the fountain whose flawless curves and unmatched beauty went on to define feminine sensuality for many, many years. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to check out other videos of beautiful ladies from the yesteryears on the end screen.